Well, the U.S. government is warning law enforcement nationwide about the potential for unrest as a result of the Israel-Hamas war. A new intelligence bulletin suggests lone offenders who are inspired by the events transpiring overseas pose the greatest threat to Americans here in the States. CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge is joining us now with a little more on this. Listen, Catherine, you've reviewed multiple law enforcement bulletins. What does the latest intelligence show us? Well, Anne-Marie and Vlad, good to be with you. The latest bulletin comes from Homeland Security, FBI, and the National Counterterrorism Center, or NCTC. This is the government's hub for threat analysis, and it confirms an uptick in threats to the Jewish, Muslim, and Arab communities here in the U.S. And the greatest risk, it says, is posed by what law enforcement calls a lone offender or a lone actor. These are individuals who are inspired to act because of the violence they see overseas. And they're not part of a larger network or a group of cells, so there's very little chatter, and it's much harder for law enforcement to disrupt these efforts. So is there any evidence, Catherine, of credible threats here in the U.S.? Well, Vlad, so far they're saying there's nothing specific or credible, but law enforcement is also warning that this is a highly volatile and evolving threat environment, evolving rather threat environment. They are pointing to an uptick in reported threats and very specific threats against these institutions, uh, specifically physical assault, bomb threats, and online calls for mass casualty attacks. So this gives you a sense of this heightened threat environment and the deep concern among law enforcement and Homeland Security that there may be that lone offender who slips through and is able to perpetuate an act of violence here in the U.S. Well, Catherine, you've seen some of the demonstrations mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Are there threats to U.S. diplomatic posts overseas? Well, clearly this is a concern for the State Department. We were able to review what are called State Department diplomatic security cables, and they're calling on all the posts overseas to stand up what are called emergency action committees or EACs. And that's significant because it's no small thing. These are the crisis management teams in posts overseas, and they've been told to assess their physical security, also look for any weaknesses where there could be violence, and to also report back here in Washington to what kind of additional security is available from their host nation. So it really is what I would call an on hands on all hands on deck a signal to those embassies. So uh, what makes this threat environment stand out from the others, Catherine? Well, this was described to me as a former Homeland Security official that it's really one of the most complex threat environments we've seen since the 9-11 terrorist attacks, in part because it's so multi-layered. We have this existing threat here in the U.S. of what they call domestic violent extremists or DVEs. You have now layered on top of that the threat of lone actors or lone offenders who are triggered or inspired to act and commit acts of violence here in the U.S. based on what they're seeing overseas. Then you also have the potential for for cyber attacks. There have been some indicators in the Middle East that they have been probing attacks against various facilities. If Iran gets involved and its proxy Hezbollah, you can look or expect that to also escalate. And then finally, we're in this age of disinformation and misinformation. And this is all designed to confuse people, to mislead people. And the objective of the bad actors is to deepen this conflict and incite further violence. All right, Catherine Herridge, as always, excellent reporting. We appreciate you, Catherine. You're welcome.